Here we have a currencies based question. The question is called bubble. And I've set out pro forma. I've added in an additional line for goodwill. I've added in an additional line for the non-controlling interest. As far as my group structure is concerned, we are told that bubble has 80% of salt and bubble has 60% of Tesla, which means that the NCI has 20% of salt and 40% of Tesla. Um, it also says that Tesla has its currencies in dinars. And so I'm looking for an exchange rate. So I go to note F and in note F, it gives me the exchange rates. And at this stage, the key exchange rate that I'm looking for is the one at the end of the year, which is 9.5, because we're going to translate all of the assets and the liabilities using that rate of exchange. I'm now going to work my way through the question line by line. So we start off with PPE. I've got a PPE total. Bubble and salt is 385. And when it comes to T, it's 390 divided by 9.5. Okay? Or, if you want to work that out, is 41.1. Doesn't matter what you put into your exam answer. We've got the investment in salt. I'm going to go to my goodwill working. Cost of investment in salt is 110 million, and that's dollars. When it comes to the investment in Tesla, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it in dinars, in dollars at the date of acquisition, and in dollars at the SFP date. And we are told that the cost at acquisition is $46 million. Now, I don't know how many dinars that is. We'll come back to that later. Financial assets. Twenty-one for our dollar-based group companies. We've got 98 million dinars. Divide by 9.5 and that gives me a figure of 10.3. Inventories. 32. Tesla. Divide by 9.5. That's 1.7. Receivables. 55 plus 36 divided by 9.5 is 3.8. And cash, 25, divide 98, sorry, divide 90 by 9.5, and you get 9.5. There's no referencing to any of these, um, so I'm going to put these straight in. 33.9, 58.8, Pick up the easy marks in the exam. Share capital is that of the parent only. There's a good chance that there could be a mark being given for that. So let's make sure we slot that straight in. The share capital of our two investments. One is going to be in dollars. The other is going to be in dinars. At the SFP and the acquisition date. SFP. And the acquisition date. Share capital. 50, 50, 210, 
retained earnings um, 74 at the SFP for salt 292 and uh, we've got the retained earnings for the parent company now my experience of dealing with group questions at P2 level is that you need a very big working for reserves lots of adjustments so we start off with the figures for the parent and that is 230 and 40. Just going to create a little bit of extra space in my net assets working here. Now that's easy for me to do using a magic computer. Try doing that in the exam and it's difficult. So what I'm emphasizing here is you, if you're not sure how much space to leave, leave some more. We have other components of equity. 12 for salt, nothing for tea. Non-current liabilities, add them together, 102, I have referenced this to one of the notes, and then we've got 110 divided by 9.5, so that works out is 11.6. Current liabilities, that's, that's 86, I've added those wrong together. plus 18 divided by 9.5, which is 1.9. Okay. Let's now go through the additional notes. Bubble acquired 80% of SALT when SALT's retained earnings were 56 and OCE was 8. So 56 and 8. The fair value was 120. So we've seen that the examiner likes to set out the fair value adjustments in such a manner. Therefore we have a fair value adjustment. Add these two together and that comes to 114. So therefore our fair value adjustment is six million dollars. If I'm going to credit equity, I've got to credit assets because it's effectively it's a revaluation. Up to PPE plus six from working two. This did not include a contingent liability, which was a possible obligation of five million. The fair value of the obligation was one when you are valuing individual assets and liabilities at the date of acquisition you always use the fair value so here we have a contingent liability which is going to reduce the assets value by one uh, it is still disclosed as a possible obligation with no change in its fair value so I'm going to put that down as an adjustment of one as well. Because it's a contingent liability, um, what we do is we add it on to our existing liabilities at fair value. So I'm now going to go up to my current liabilities, plus one, and that's come from working number two. Any remaining difference in the fair value of net assets is due to non-depreciable land. That's good, we don't have to depreciate. The fair value of the NCI was estimated at 25 million. If I go to my NCI working at acquisition, 25 million. That also goes into our goodwill calculation. NCI at acquisition, 25 million. So this is nothing to do with currencies at this stage. We are picking up the mark and all the time I'm going through the question I'm thinking am I picking up marks am I picking up marks 
Bubble also owns 60% of Tisla, a company located overseas, which uses the dinar as its functional currency, but we're going to present using dollars. Absolutely. The shares were acquired at a cost of $368 million. So when we go to Dina, when we go to our goodwill calculation, we've got the cost in T of $368 million. So what I can now do is I can say, well, at the SFP date, goodwill is an asset. So I need to restate the cost of the investment using the closing rate of exchange. And that gives me a figure of $38.7 million. What has that meant? It meant that the, the value of the asset has fallen. It's decreased by 7.3. And the way that I deal with that, which I know is slightly imperfect, decrease in cost in Tisla, 7.3, and that's come from working number three. At the date of acquisition, the retained earnings were 258. So I slot those in at 258. And OCE was zero. No fair value adjustments were required. The fair value of the NCI was 220 million dinars. If the examiner gives me numbers in dinars, I just write them into my workings in dinars. I'll convert at a later point in time. An impairment review was undertaken. No impairment was necessary in relation to SALT, but the goodwill of Tesla is impaired by 20%. So I'm just going to say here, impair 20%. I'll come back to that at a later point in time. Note C. On the 1st of February X5, Bubble lent money to Tesla for $10 million. So this is going to need some form of working. We're going to have dollar rate and dinar. So on the 1st of February X5, what did we do? We lent $10 million. At that date, the rate was 9. So that means that in Tisla's books, it recorded a loan of 90 million dinars. It repaid 5 million on the 1st of July X5. On the 1st of July X5, the exchange rate was 10. So that is 50 million dinars. At the year end, 5 million dinars, sorry, 5 million dollars, I'm going to translate at 9.5, which gives me a figure of 47.5. So therefore, there is an exchange loss of 9.5 million, oh sorry, 7.5 million dinars. Which increases the liability. So what I'm going to have to do, because I'm increasing the liability, I'm now going to go 
to my current liabilities and say 7.5 divided by 9.5. I've increased the liability of the subsidiary. And what else am I doing here? And we're also going to decrease profits because this is a currency loss as far as the subsidiary is concerned. Therefore, we go up to our net assets working. Currency loss from working number six, 7.5. This is an intra-group loan. You net off intra-group balances in your consolidated accounts. So we put that loss through, but intra-group balances should be netted off. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to reduce by 5 million my financial assets because that is intra-group and I'm going to reduce 5 million current liabilities. Actually, sorry, those should be... Are they, are they, is that a long-term loan? That's a long-term loan, isn't it? So that should be... Those adjustments should be through in, in non-current liabilities. So some of that you should be able to netting off the two figures of five million would have given you a mark. The other complicated stuff is messy, but you could have done some of it. And the whole point about approaching a question of this nature is to pick up marks. Not to pick up full marks, but just pick up some marks. So that deals with note C. We turn our attention to note D, and we've got an overseas property. We acquired the property. Uh, it had a fair value of $58.5 million. We paid the supplier with land, which bubble, bubble had held, but had yet to determine its use. The carrying amount of the land was $5 million, but it had an open market value of 7 In an asset swap, If the asset lost has commercial value, use this to value Use this to value the asset that we have just acquired. Therefore, we're going to value the new property Um, so can you see that we've increased the value of PPE? So the asset, the lapse of the land. Had a value. Of 5 million. In the SFP. 
So I'm going to increase PPE by 2 million and show a gain of 2 million on disposal. So I'm increasing the value of the land by 2 million. If I increase my assets, I must also increase equity. So on our land disposal, you think about it, if you sell an asset, you take the gain on disposal to profit or loss or retained earnings. We've got depreciation is going to be 7 million divided by 35 years and we've owned the land for six months. That works out as 0 0.1 million. So here, I'm going to reduce the value of PPE by 0 0.1 million. And I'm going to charge depreciation against profits and that's come from working number seven. In addition, Bubble spent half a million to help relocate staff and added this to the cost of the asset. Well, relocation costs are just an expense. They should go through the accounts. So I'm going to reduce profits by relocation expenses of 0.5. And what else am I going to reduce? PPE, because we've added that half a million to PPE so I put through that adjustment like so due to a surge in the market it's estimated that the fair value of the property is 75 million dinars at the end of the year and we're using the revaluation model. So therefore the value equals $6.9 million after depreciating the asset. The fair value of the land is 75 million dinars the exchange rate at the end of the year is 9.5. So therefore we need to revalue the asset to 7.9 million. Our revaluation gain is 1 million. If you're revaluing an asset, debit asset, credit revaluation reserve, or OCE, of course. There's an awful lot taking place there, and quite a lot of it was tricky, but some of that was F7. Some of it's P2. That deals with note D. Note E, 
we've got another pension scheme. We see that the examiner likes pensions, likes defined benefit pensions. Okay. So we now come to our pension scheme. And it says uh, the only thing that we've done is to put the current cash contributions as an expense of six million. Well, you shouldn't do that. Contributions increase the assets. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to take those contributions and I'm going to add them back to profit because they shouldn't have been expensed. Contributions are added to the pension asset. I go to retained earnings because retained earnings are, of course, my profits. As far as the pension is concerned, we have a net liability. So if I have my assets and liabilities, I have an opening figure of 15 for the liability. We've got cash paid into the scheme. Cash paid into the scheme is going to increase my scheme assets by 6 million. We have a service cost and we are told that the service cost is 5 million. That goes to the statement of profit and loss. We have an interest cost and the examiner is a little bit mean here. The interest cost is always based on the yield on high quality bonds at the start of the year. So at the start of the year, the yield is 8%. 8% of 15 million because it's effectively liabilities less assets is going to work out as 1.2 million. There's often a twist to the pensions, but if you've set it out in this way, you've already picked up quite a few marks. In addition, a payment of 3 million was made out of the cash of the scheme. So we've got cash paid is reducing the assets by 3 million. And this um, this reduced our liabilities by 4 million at the same time. So now I've got an asset of 3. I'm just going to 15 plus 5 plus 1.2. Liabilities, 17.2. We have an expected obligation or liability at the end of the year of 14.2. Curtailments are taken to P&L. So what does it work out? I've got 5 plus 1.2 minus 4 plus 3. When I net off all of those figures, I end up with an expense in my statement of profit and loss of 5.2. That will flow through into group reserves. So we show that as an expense, so therefore that will reduce group reserves by 5.2. We're then told the actuary has assessed the scheme is in deficit by 17 million. So our actual obligation is 17 
we therefore have a remeasurement loss of 2.8. If it's a remeasurement loss, that goes to other comprehensive income or other reserves here. And we need to show that according to the balance sheet, we've currently got a liability of 15. We should show a liability of 17. So you either show just plus 2 or just show the movement like so. That deals with all of the information in the question. We can therefore go to working number two and just treat this as a normal consolidation. So net assets have increased from 119 to 141. Why? Well, OCE has increased by four. and therefore retained earnings must have increased by 18. If we take a look at our overseas subsidiary, net assets have increased by 26.5 million dinars. Make sure we get our currencies correct. In terms of goodwill, we start off with our local subsidiary. So we'd say less net assets at acquisition a 119. So we've got a goodwill figure of 16 for sugar. So I'm going to take that to my statement of financial position. We also have to work out the goodwill in relation to Tesla. So we've got our NCI at acquisition, which was 220 million dinars, less the net assets at acquisition, which are 468 million dinars. That gives me a figure of 120 million dinars. Goodwill is calculated using the closing rate of exchange. So I'm going to divide by 9.5. That gives me a figure of $12.6 million. And then it gets really horrible. We've got to impair by 20%. 20% 20 of 120 is 24. So we've got a dinar value for goodwill of 96. I'm going to divide that by 9.5 and that gives me a figure of 10.1. So therefore the impairment is the balancing figure of 2.5 million dollars. Are we using the fair value method or the proportionate method? Fair value. So if you are impairing goodwill and you're using the fair value method, you split it between the group and the NCI. So that's going to be 60% to the group, 40% to the 
to the MCI. So I'm going to take that figure of 2.5. Uh, we've got the non-controlling interests at acquisition. Um, and I'm now going to impair Let's make sure we get our currencies right. I've got this, the rest of it's in dinars. I could convert that back into dinars if I wanted to. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, impair at 2.5 million times 40% is 1 million. But that's dollars. So you've got to be very careful with your currencies here. Goodwill impair 60% times 2.5 is 1.5. So that's dealt with the goodwill issue. So we've got a goodwill figure of 10.1 to take to our consolidated statement. Of financial position giving us a grand total of 26.1 what else do we have to deal with post acquisition profits and that's something you should always put because I suspect what they will do in the exam if you just put sub since acquisition Provided you give 60% or 80%, whatever it's going to be. So for salt, it's 80% of what? It's 80% of 18. For retained earnings, which was, okay, so that's, that works out as 14.4. And 80% of 4 is 3.2. And for TINA, since acquisition, the profits are 265 million dinars. Dinars is the post acquisition profit, but we need to convert that into dollars. So it's 60% times 26.5 million divided by the exchange rate of 9.5. And that gives me a figure. Of 1.7 million dinars. So 1.7 million dollars. Who else is entitled to some of the profit of the subsidiary? The non controlling interest. So we've got the NCI at acquisition, share since acquisition. For sugar, for salt, <laughs> not sugar. Why well, don't know why I called it sugar? Um, it's twenty percent. Remember, the non-controlling interest don't care about the difference between OCE and retained earnings. Add those two together. That's twenty percent of. 22, which is 4.4. That gives me a figure of $29.4 million. For the other company, in case I get the name wrong, it's 26.5 million dinars times 40% which is the NCI share. 
that works out as 10.6 so that's 231.6 divide that by 9.5 and that gives me a figure of 24.3 take away the 1 for the impairment takes me down to 23.3 Add together those two figures, I've got 29.4 plus 23.3. So I've got an NCI total of 52.7. The NCI total is part of equity, so we're going to take that to the equity section of our statement of financial position. Don't do this in the exam, you've not got time, and you get no extra marks for it. If we take a look at our totals for the group in terms of retained earnings, I've got a retained earnings total 239.5 and an OCI total, an OCE total of 41.4. Both of those are part of equity. So retained earnings, 239.5, I'm just going to move that down a little bit, 52.7. 41.4, both of those come from working number five. We can now add up our non-current liabilities. 111.4 and our current liabilities 88.9 if I add those up that gives me a total of 613.9 but adding it up is an irrelevance in the exam you've no marks for totals PPE, we put through lots of adjustments, but having put through those adjustments, 434.5, our financial assets, 26.3, let's add those up, we might be having a lucky day, and we add those up, and just by coincidence, Assets equals equity plus liabilities.